just us monsters. <laughs> Lucky for Banner, I showed up, because he'd be a smoldering pile of ashes by now. Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like, links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the uh, Marvel fan site that'll have plot synopsis and character bios for this issue. The Incredible Hulk 344 from 1988. I have two versions of this comic book. I have a beat up version that I had from the time that it came out. And then I'm one that's a near mint because I, I wanted to get a nice copy. So I do have two of them, but, uh, Great cover here. McFarlane does not... He's done inking, I believe, during this time. He's going into Amazing Spider-Man. Um, his Hulk run is almost over. So, um, we have Bob Wyacek, who does the inking of the cover and on the inside. But he does pretty faithful adaption of McFarlane. Um, I think Marvel, during this time, realized that they had someone with... Um, with skill that people really gravitated to so great cover here like i said look at this just i love it so all right so we got a, a guy here um on uh we have a base here most likely gamma base but we're not told we're not told where we are or anything we start with a quote here Another such victory over the Romans, and we are undone from the Plutarch. Um, so this uh, this guy here, um, he goes, man, was she worth it? I mean, so I exaggerated a little, told her I was a lieutenant, had an important job. So what? I mean, I am the uh, base's first line of defense. I'll make brass eventually. And boy, was she worth it. And look at him, just kind of all... Um, as I mentioned before, Tom McFarlane is not inking it, but you can see that he must have laid pretty um, detailed pencils because uh, Wycheck is <laughs> putting in all the lines here already. So, <clears throat> um, so he goes, huh, as this truck is coming. He's like, halt, this is a military outpost. State your business. And they open the door and hits the poor guy here. And out comes the Redeemer. And he goes, we're here to steal a Gamma Bomb. Honest. And then punches the guy out or tosses him out or whatever. Um, here. And uh, uh, Redeemer says, boss, Sentry's been disposed of without a shot being fired. And so, of course, we have the leader. This is kind of what the leader looks like uh, during this time here. Kind of a, the big brain instead of the longer one. And the leader says, good, conserve your ammo. You'll need it. Adjust your chest camera. My view's a little fuzzy. And uh, here, um, hey, boss, why don't you just use those fun pink humanoids of yours for this job? Um... And the leader says, because they're immediately identifiable with me. The world thinks the leader is dead. No need to send up a flare. Unless, Redeemer, you and Rock think you can't handle it. And Redeemer says, ha, huh, what you think, Rock? Up for some murder and mayhem? And <laughs> I really don't like um, Larroquette's, um Just... Uh, it, it's all right. They can't all be home runs, right? Um, so, um, just like Chris Claremont with the Brood, they they can't all be home runs. I uh, sometimes, you know, this is what you get. Um, so, uh, Rock says, "Quit screwing around. Let's just do it." And Redeemer says, "I hear you, Rock. We'll do it all right." And he must say, "Yeehaw." And the truck busts in. 
I can't believe a base would be so easily taken care of. Gotta love comic books. All right. And so you can see him punching through here. All right, alert the whole blasted base, and he fires. And look at these rockets he has here. For all the good it'll do ya. And then shoots, and then black. Again, um, I understand that Wycheck uses probably a bit of a heavy... Uh, He's probably using a pen, most likely. But, like I said, he is putting in all the work. Uh, McFarlane really, uh, like I said, must have done detailed pencils here. And so, um, Pyrrhic Victory, a turning point in the life of the Hulk. Brought to you by Peter David, writer, Todd McFarlane, penciler, Bob Wyacek, is our... Um, inker. I want to bring into here the um, Bob Harris. Bob Harris was the editor during this time. Of course, he would become the editor in chief that pretty much fired Chris Claremont from X Men to give it to Jim Lee, who would just end up leaving and going to Image anyway. So, and then Tom DeFalco was the editor-in-chief at this time, before Bob Harris would actually replace him. Bob Harris would actually end up also being the X-Men editor. So, lots of stuff going on at this time, but... um, And so, we have here uh, Bruce and Betty here. Now, this one isn't being narrated by Betty, Okay, so Betty's the narrator here. He feels so good. His chest against my cheek, the damp cloth uh, cleaning my face. I, I want to tell him, Bruce, I'm pregnant, but I'm afraid. Afraid of what he'll say. Afraid of breaking the spell of blissful silence between us. Does he want me back? If he knows about the baby, he'll feel he has to. I can't tell him. Not yet. Oh, Bruce, what are you thinking? So, nice little... um page here of the two of them sort of cuddling here um total mcfarlane-esque like i said the pen the pencils had to have been tight because there is no way that they're loose and then um why check is just doing all these lines without um without mcfarlane being um putting them in there so and so uh, Bruce thinks here, she ran out on me. I should resent her terribly, yet all I can think of is how overjoyed I am to have her back. But as a scientist, I'm trained to question everything, to accept nothing at face value. And even at face value, this doesn't make sense, he says. So, Betty vanished over a month ago, and now when Rick Clay and I are heading to Yuma, Arizona, where the gamma bombs are being stored, she shows up, chased up by giant robots, no less. It's obviously a delaying tactic brought on by whom? What's worse? I don't care. So <clears throat> Betty sort of is, is still hurt from, and he goes, Hi, Bruce, miss me? Betty, Betty, I. I see you're letting your hair grow. Um, and she's like, you like it? So when you, you see the, the speech balloon kind of like this, um, it, it displays that she's uh, a little bit out of it. So, um, I love your hair very much. I'm so glad to, to see your hair, he says. So, um, and then again, Betty's narrating here. Should I be like Bruce, hide my emotions in a shell? What would that be like, she says. <clears throat> and so here's a RoboCop. Um, they're, they're in the movies, uh, here. So we have, um, Rick Jones and then Clay Quartermain here. Clay's a little bit upset because he wants to continue with the mission, but, um, uh, Rick says here, oh, for pity's sake, Clay, he, need, he and Betty needed some time together. Delaying things a day isn't going to kill us, uh, is it? <laughs> so... And so, um, Clay, I said, and you can see them walking here. Um, I heard you, Rick. Look, I'm happy to see Betty, too. But the timing, I keep thinking, it's a move to slow us down. And if somebody's slowing us down, 
it means we're in a race and we didn't even know. I should have been firm with Bruce, but if I get him mad, he'll just bottle it up and the Hulk will take it out on me. I don't need that. My skull's still ringing from last night. And Rick says, which still leaves a million dollar question. Once we get to Yuma, what are we going to do? Oh, do? That's easy. We have to show the world um, at large what's there. I love this. Um, this is just really cool. I um, I like this, uh, the inking, the way the way it does. I even even here, sort of. Uh, um, I don't know. Um, I like this. Uh, you don't see McFarland doing very uh, very often dark. And Clay continues, we're going to steal a gamma bomb. And so here you can see um, the military uh, still trying to stop Redeemer in his one truck. So and you can see here Rock kind of coming out from the back of the uh, truck. <laughs> Again, I'm not I'm not big on on rock here or the way at least but like I said they can't all be winners so all right so you can hear him see this here he's kind of like uh brings these like pointy things so he's able to shape shift uh himself and now he's uh whirling around like a top and just wrecking everything here you can see him taking out this tank here and after he disposes of it, he's uh, going into the base here. And you can just see that the Redeemer and Rock are just kicking ass here, just getting rid of everything. And you can see this hand here. And we are, although we're not being shown anyone dead per se, although you do see this hand, it doesn't say they're dead. They could easily be unconscious. So, um... You can see that uh, Redeemer and Rock have uh, gone through everybody here. So, back to Bruce and Betty here. So, Betty's talking here and says, I don't know what to say, Bruce. I was in a motel room in West Virginia, and then some crazy robot grabbed me. I passed out. The next thing I knew, I was being chased through the woods, and you guys found me. I know it sounds insane. And Bruce says, I believe uh, quite a lot. Remember who you're talking to, Betty. And she goes, I remember my husband. And again, um, here, and continuing the narration, I can't tell him about the baby. Not till I know how it is between us. And Bruce says, Betty, I understand why you ran away, but you should at least have left me a note, something. I was so worried. And uh, Betty says, I did at the hospital. And he says, really? I never saw it. Do you remember what it said? And Betty says, um, it was a lifetime ago. Something like, my dearest Bruce, I love you with all my heart, but I can't stand living with fear anymore. I have to try and have a normal life, one without gamma rays and spies. And, and Bruce interrupts, and hulks? And she says, yes, and hulks. So... Um, real quick here, uh, I love these things, these McFarlane-isms here, where you can see a background, but there's no detail, but you can tell exactly what this is here. Ah, oh, it's, it's so well done. This is a, a big reason why Todd McFarlane became so popular, why he, guys like me were just, um, all over him and Jim Lee. I wasn't big on Rob Liefeld, but I thought I had to like him because the, just the way he was portrayed. But I, I, I never really cared about Rob Liefeld, to be honest. But I was Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, and Todd McFarlane always. So, all right. And uh, Betty, you can see her pulling away, and Bruce, of course, is Betty. I, Betty, are you pulling away, Betty? Are you that afraid of me? And she answers, afraid of a man who's who's considers emotions so horrible that he can only show them 
if it's through somebody or something else. And uh, Bruce says, I love these huge John Lennon glasses that they put on him. Um, and uh, Bruce says, it's not that I'm afraid to show emotions, Betty. Just what can happen if they get out of control. Don't you understand? For me, getting upset or angry has always gone hand to hand with violence. First with my father and then with the Hulk. And here she is uh, sitting on a swing set. And uh, Betty says, but Bruce, you've gone overboard. You're afraid of violence, so you've locked everything away. I don't, th I don't think you married me out of love. It's more like an obligation, a sense of this should, um, this should be done. Scientists hate loose ends. And Bruce says, "Yes, we do, don't we? So where do we go from here?" And um, she asks, "Do you love me, Bruce? With everything I have to give." And then, of course, we can uh, continue the narration here. Yes, I guess you do. And that's always been the problem, hasn't it, my love? Bruce, it's not enough. And he goes, um, what do you want from me? Something you can't give. Um, Peter David is always... Um, so I'm a huge Peter David fan, by the way. He has health problems, and I think he has a GoFundMe account. If he can help something, please feel free to do that. But um, Peter David is a fantastic writer. He um, he does mostly little funny bits, but this dude um, really knows how to construct... He had a very long, uh, lengthy run on Hulk, and um, I'm going to cover as much of it as I can, but um, I just, I love this building that he's doing. This is his really, uh, since he took over, he took over with issue 321, um, or th I'm sorry, 331. So he's been, uh, he's, he's had about a little over a year now. And you can see that given the chance to breathe, he's, he's creating a huge uh, universe. He's going to be around for a while. So the things that he's going to do, are, they're, um, it's cool. So, all right. And she's like, come on, um, the so mcfarlane ass. This is why I think they, they, they were detailed. And again, black silhouette, white silhouette. Uh, them also in silhouette, but in purple. I mean, Jesus, three silhouettes. Oh, it's just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and so um, she says, um, you'll see. Oh, this is... This panel here, I absolutely love it. So we continue the narration. Now more than ever, I know I can't tell him, not yet. So I lead him up into the woods until I find a small secluded clearing. And then I sit. And Bruce is like, Betty, what are you doing? And he says, it occurred to me, Bruce, that you... Um, sorry, it occurred to me, Bruce, that you and I have gone as far as we can. I spent years loving you, uh, leaving you, crying over you, fighting with you, and all because of him. There's no point anymore. So we're going to sit until sunset, and then the Hulk and I are going to have a chat. And so you can see here, sunset is coming. And uh, Bruce here, again, silhouette-ish. Uh, just McFarlane... Also knows how to construct silhouettes. I mean, damn it. Look at this. It's just amazing stuff here. And Bruce says, Betty, that's insane. I won't stand here and permit that. You don't know what he could do. And love. This is a typical McFarland panel here. Uh, no one knows better than I what he can do. Um, And so she continues here. This is what I want, Bruce. Uh, walk away if you wish, but if you do, I swear you'll never see me again here. So, and uh, now at the um, at the van here, um, 
Clay's like, if they're not here, that's just swell. Now what? Oh, sorry, that was Rick. And we'll find them, says Clay. You think they uh, they know there's only an hour till sundown? And Clay says, I hope so. At least it's, it's a full moon tonight. The Hulk should be in one of his better moods. So this is kind of establishing that the phases of the moon do affect how the Hulk behaves. So we got the leader looking at the destruction caused by his uh, Redeemer and Rock here. Excellent, gentlemen. 500 feet due west, and you will find an elevator that will bring you to the Gamma Bomb storage facility. Go to it, Rock and Redeemer. You're justifying my faith in you. And now the leader thinks to himself, great. Uh, I just absolutely uh, like this here. Fools, you serve your purpose. I'll only need you a while longer. And uh, then again, you have your uses. And I should know, no one uses others better than the leader here. But of course, the leader is being watched. And here in uh, kind of in silhouette here, we see someone here. Does that fool leader know that we're watching him? Of course not. He's only the means to an end, that end being the Hulk. So we're setting up something else here. So, and uh, here we continue with Betty. We stare at each other wordless for an hour, and then Bruce twitches, moans, and dashes into the woods. He wants to shield me from the change. It's sweet, late, but sweet. And you can see him, ah, and a tear um beautifully done here of no tear a tear forming the tear falling and just even still just that looks awesome wipe away that tear it's a sign of weakness and he'd hate that and this panel here oh my goodness gracious is this not so freaking amazing and hulk says that's better so banner found you well now his puny life is complete and she goes yes you found me again bruce and hulk is like don't call me that i'm not puny banner so you said over and over through the years and uh me think thou dost protest too much and hulk is like oh thou dost dust thou that is cool this is i love this page i think this is an a very well done page. Bravo, Todd McFarlane. Yeah, just wonderful. Uh, Bruce, Betty. And uh, Betty says, it's Clay and Rick. Can we uh, talk somewhere? Um, and um, Hulk is like, why should I? And Betty says, I understand if you don't want to. If talking to me makes you nervous and hawk is like don't pull that reverse psychology crap with me all right we'll have your little talk and so off they go it's about time i got you out of my hair once and for all as the two of them watch them leave and another great panel here oh i wonder what this would have looked like if mcfarlane would have inked it himself complete completely but all right, so we continue here. And so Redeemer says here, this is a lot of work, Leader. A shame you couldn't uh, you couldn't have just matter transported one of the bombs out. And he says, uh, the Leader says, I have my reasons, Redeemer, not the least of which is that molecularly disassembling a bomb might set it off prematurely. The bombs should be five floors below Soldiers are waiting for uh, for the elevator to descend. And Rock says, then let's be elsewhere when it does. I uh, like your thinking, Rock. And so down they go here, down the hatch. And so here are the soldiers waiting. And here they come um, as they crash right through the ceiling. I'd have thought of a new shape for Chase, uh, for Casing Saunders. Want to see? Sure would, Rock. 
And so look at this. Now, this is a little bit cooler here. I'm not going to read all these things, but um, here is um, Rock kind of disassembling or uh, dismantling. And here's Redeemer. Um, so they take care of everyone here. And you can see him smashing through. And here are the bombs. So our stakes are getting higher and higher. So Hulk is a jerk. And so look at this. He took her to a freaking mountain. Now, real quick, I love this panel as well. Because it's a splash page, per se, with the, three, with the other two panels in here. So... Pretty cool here. So Betty's going to continue her narration. Notice it's a full moon again because it's always a full moon regardless of, of the of all the things. It's always a full moon. So um, so she says, if I tell him about the baby, how will he react? Will he laugh in my face or hold me? It depends, I guess, on whether he's totally separate from Bruce or part of Bruce that he denies. Either way, I won't tell him if I uh, if I throw the pregnancy in his face. It's like I'm giving up, admitting he won't accept me for myself. I might win, but at the cost of self-respect, a few tattered shreds I have left anyway. Lord, it's cold up here. And Hulk says, if you're going to start crying, forget it. it that won't cut any ice with me. No, I don't have any tears left. And forget about whining over how uh, you got hurt a while back. That was Banner's fault. So, oh, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful. He shouldn't have been holding you when he changed. And so, this, look, oh, my goodness gracious. I am so sad when McFarlane ended up leaving. I know he had a very successful run in Amazing Spider-Man. And... Perhaps he wasn't interested in in I know that him and Peter David has some problems and perhaps he wasn't interested in the Mr. Fix it portion of where the Hulk was going to go. But man, oh, dude was made for Hulk. Um, if you don't think the McFarlane Hulk is the best Hulk, it, it's top five. Um. I know that a lot of people have drawn Hulk, but who visually has done a better job than Todd McFarlane on the Hulk? I I don't know. I don't know. I to me he's number 1. Um yes, I understand. Um we've had Del Keon and Gary Frank and Mike Deodato Jr. We've had Sal Buscema. Um We've had in recently, I like the guy that drew him uh, on Immortal Hulk. I love the brow, and I think that he's the closest to bring back that brow. I know Ed McGinnis did the Red Hulk, but um, ah, to me, it's Todd McFarlane, uh, this brutish, uh, how he draws him. It's just... Um, just awesome. Anyway, we'll continue with the story because I, I could I could talk about Todd McFarlane's wonderful art, and I should show you here again. Same same idea as above a splash page with a panel here. So look at that. Oh, all right. So um, let's see here. Betty says it's not about that either. Well, what then? What do you want from me? Says the Hulk. Just accept me. And uh, Hulk says, accept you? That's a laugh. You and Banner and Jones, all you've ever wanted to do is get rid of me. And I'm supposed to forget all that? Accept me? Ha! He says. So, she, uh, Betty continues here. You don't understand. I'm not going to fight you anymore. But I won't be afraid of you either, she says. And Hulk says, you were afraid enough to run off with that Ramon character. Um, he, he, your idea of a real man, he show you a good time. And Betty says, you sound jealous. Ridiculous. Answer the question. 
<laughs> that is awesome. So again, another splash page here um, with the other with the other pages here. That's just awesome. Look at this. Ah. Oh ridiculous answer to the question that peter david is an incredible writer he is in my top 10 of best writers of all time i have just about everything he has ever done i have his complete hulk run every single issue of his hulk run i have so um so betty says you're wrong okay all that time after Ramon took me to the hospital, there was nothing between us because I couldn't stop thinking about you, Bruce. Oh, sorry, just about Bruce. And I've come to the to realize that I can't get rid of Bruce any more than Bruce can get rid of you. You're both too deeply rooted. So she's talking here, and I again love the oh these McFarlaneisms. That's where you and I are different. I'll never stop ranting. Uh, sorry, wanting to get rid of Banner. And she says, um, you can't. He's a part of you, and he is a part of me. That's the part of you you'll always deny, and he'll deny you. I'm just tired of being caught in the middle. Uh, you both have to. And then he cuts her off here, and then we get another splash with a couple. We don't both have to nothing. Save the psychobabble for Doc Sampson. I'm not Banner. Never was. Never will be. And look at this other incredible. Oh, look at this. Just this brutish Hulk. What would this have been like if, Mc, again, if McFarlane would have been inking this entire page or this, you know, the next few issues? Because he's done inking the Hulk, unfortunately. He's saving it all for Spider-Man. Which, by the way, I do have a run. Or, um. I do have a playlist with uh, the McFarlane, so check it out. I sometimes see a little of you in Bruce when we argue, when uh, when we're intimate, just glimpses, and then he covers it up. Let me see you. Uh, let me see a little of Bruce in you, Betty says, and um. Hulk is like, that's it. I'm out of here. I s you said you'd talk. I lied. I do that sometimes. And so again, it isn't working, but I can't fail at this. Like I failed at everything else in my life. I can't. So, and again, another splash with other panels. This, this, this was just composed so wonderfully look at this in silhouette but you can totally get the picture and then oh it just this is so good here so um and so betty says here no i'm not finished you will stay here and you will talk to me um you're not just anger and rage you have uh bruce's real love and passions Locked in, locked in you too. It's not fair, she says. So you can see her pointing at him here. And now we got the Hulk. Nothing's fair, kiddo. And Hulk says, or sorry, Betty says, uh, give me some of Bruce, please. Just a glimpse of the man hidden inside of you, please. Forget it. I'm not giving you anything. Not a thing, he says. I absolutely love, look at this, I love the, the, oh, McFarlane is perfect, perfect for the Hulk, perfect for the Hulk, and so she says, but you already have Betty, uh, sorry, that was Betty, and Hulk says, what do you mean, I, no, you swore you wouldn't, I, you promised yourself, I, no, I'm, and then in small, pregnant, look at that, just blast you. Ah, oh, that is just so absolutely great here. So, I know what you'll say. It's Banner's child, not yours. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Fly away. I give up. Bruce and you are two different people. You win. You always win. Me, I just I just don't care anymore. And she laughs. And look at, look at Hulk. Just, and he's... 
he says, uh, I thought you didn't have any tears left. I lied. I do that sometimes, she says. And next, closing curtain, our double-sized finale. So, oh, isn't that a absolutely wonderful, wonderful way. So, here we go. Incredible Hulk, 344. Peter David, Todd McFarlane with Bob Wyatt in the inks doing his best to get all these lines through. So, oh, just look at that. Like and subscribe. I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.